All right, this is one of those short videos we hope that I demonstrate for you how some of these skills come together. So I'm just going to put a bunch of vectors on the plane. These are going to be 2D. I'll also do it 3D to show you, in fact, you can slide and slide and divide and divide and slide and do concurrent stuff, but really in the end you want to do the sum of R cross F divided by the sum of F and do a little bit of math. When you combine it with your CAD abilities, shifting around, you'll see that things are not anywhere near as bad as they should be. I'm going to just put some vectors up here arbitrarily. I'm going to assume, I'm going to go all so they're positive towards the right so we don't have to kind of label them. I'm going to put a vector here, a vector here, a vector here, and a vector here. All right, so they're all going kind of positive. They all have, should have positive x's when I list them. Now, if I want to know the moment about 0, 0.00 right here of any one of those, if I want to add those up, I can just list each one and start writing down the numbers. Because my zeros, if I'm going to think about the moment about 0, 0, the moment for that force vector is going to be defined by a radial vector. My radial vector goes from 0, it has an x of 13.14 a y of 37.49 and a z of 0, but my force vector is a x of 9.14 or 1.5, a y of 9.57 and a z of 0. Again, these are that was my that's my first vector. I'm going to go ahead and do a second vector. I should number those. Let's see and do this one list. That first one, it is a radial vector. It goes to 23.1 eight forty three point four point two eight and zero and it's that the force vector itself is in the delta it's twenty seven point four five it is minus fifteen point eight two and zero the third one and I'm just gonna do three and then I'm gonna move on the third one is gonna be I'll call that one there is a radial vector of from 0 to 29.66, 13.43, and 0. And the force vector is 12.27, 10.46, and of course z. I guess I'll do the fourth one to demonstrate. You can do a bunch of sliding and dividing, but in the end, you have Wolfram Alpha, you have your calculator, you have an ability to do matrices. So basically, and you have an ability soon to pull this stuff off of AutoCAD and hit a button at great peril until you actually see how this stuff works. You've been doing it for about three semesters, believe it or not, minus 14.70. And zero. So I've got four vectors here. Now, and let's assume though, now so you can see something, let me put a, never use this command by the way, but I'm put it in here anyway. It is called sketch. Never use it. There it is. Pen down. Here we go. Pen down. Whoa. Never use this command, but it's a cool command. And then Okay, so that basically, all of a sudden, I'll put a little circle here at 0, comma, 0. All right, so you might have been interested in, and this is uh, something that was pinned right there, you might have been interested in the torque about that point. However, at some point, what did this do? Hmm, let's see. At some point, someone might have gone, well, you know what, let's cut that, and now let's take yes, and then join window. And now all of a sudden, if you see region, you make that a region here. Uh, but couldn't do it. Couldn't make it a region. Too much work going on. But I'd say now instead, I'm going to visually, I'm going to go ahead and move my analogical spinny point to the center of mass. How would that happen? Someone busted your support. Now, how could you do the same calculation? Well, you could just use a subtracted vector. In other words, if you want to know the vector from 
here, sorry, from the center there or the, the center of mass to the beginning of that one, well, you could have just known, known that this was this vector minus this vector. You could have known that. Or in AutoCAD, you could just do UCS at the center of this. And now when you start doing your lists, UCS, center of this, accept. And now when you do your lists, this vector now is going to have the same delta of 9.14 and 9.57, but a different x and a different y. So you can do a lot of that. You should also, however, learn how to use the ability to add and subtract the radial vector. As we look a little bit within SketchUp and Revit, you'll see, in fact, how SketchUp handles things a little bit differently, more mathematically correct. So, so you can do all that in the end. Remember, you can slide this to here and then add them together. I'm just going to do one here. We'll be doing these in class and comparing. You need to grab ownership that these are the same. So I'm going to do a line from the endpoint here to the end point there. Those of you who are better at using snaps than me extend. Screw that. Now I'm going to go ahead and move window from the end point there to the intersection there. All right, what am I doing? Well, I'm just going to add those two vectors together. So I got that one. Move this one here from the end point there. So I move them to their point of concurrency. I add them together by going tip to tail. That doesn't like that. Zoom point 5x. Move this one from the end point there to the end point there. And of course, my resultant now, those two, is a line from the end point there to the end point there. And then you start doing it again. Slide this one up and add. So you know how to do that. Now let's go look at what Wolfram Alpha would do, because I'm not going to do the calculator. I'm going to stop and get Wolfram Alpha up. I've got to add one, two, three, four torques, and then four forces, and we'll see what we get up for our sum. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit a bunch of undo so I can save this drawing and compare what we end up with. Undo, 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 undo. And that's basically our original problem. I'm going to pause and then bring up Wolfram Alpha, show you how one of them works, and then you can think about how you go about doing this pretty quickly, pretty efficiently using a mix of skills. All right, I know you think I all bought stock in this company, but I really, I didn't. So um, I'm going to just show you, you'll need to take out then a sheet of paper or, you know, something else. You can keep track of these vector multiplications, cross products, but we're going to do the cross product of our first vector there, which is 13.14. You don't need to put the I. It's assumed when you're in a vector world that you've got the I, J, and the K, but you have to put the K. AutoCAD does not make you do that. That's bad training on AutoCAD's part. You have to always put that third coordinate in most of this world nowadays, 9.14, 9.57. Think about the difference between leveling total station and GPS. GPS is always pulling that third coordinate. So you grab those two together, close that up, hit an equal here, and you get a calculation. The moment calculated for those two vectors has a value of, as it should, 0, 0, 0, minus 216.9. So you write that down. Maybe you do this. Maybe you pull it out. You cut and paste. I guess it doesn't let you do that. You might have to do something else. You might get some transcription errors. But you start with that. Then you go ahead and do it again. This time you fill in your second vector. And I'll just end with that one. It's 23.18 and 43.28, comma, 43.28 comma 0 and that it's the vector of course was 27.45 this was the force vector comma 
minus 15.82 comma 0. You can do it in your calculator. I'm not completely telling you you need to do this, but you should get aware of what is possible out here in the world. And that torque, of course, now is 0 in the x, 0 in the y, and minus 1554. Of course, that is that shows you the axis of spin. All right, you add all those together, you subtract, you, you take the forces, you add them together, and that gets you the moment arm. We'll look at that next and in class. Thanks for listening.